we actually have an update for you guys i actually have an update for you guys for those of you who have been checking me out and listening to some of the things that i've been speaking about concerning jay slater's disappearance there is a bit of an update here another update courtesy of the daily mail of course the daily mail are the only ones that are really on it because this is like trashy uk news so it's no surprise the daily mail are on it um and obviously it gives them a chance as well to kind of stick the boot in at minorities and foreigners and stuff and you know non-blacks non-white sorry because the people involved on the other side are potentially dealers and shit so this is courtesy of the daily mail the daily mail are reporting the following headline the identity of jay slater's johnny vegas man is revealed by tv sleuth while hunt continues as new identified mystery woman is now placed at last night's last sighting of the missing bricklayer so in the disappearance of jay slater there is this man called johnny vegas who allegedly was one of the two men who drove jay slater back from the club all the way to their airbnb because that was the last time he was seen at that airbnb so people are trying to you know figure out who's the second man maybe they'll get some clues maybe they'll find out it was him who knows but this particular detective i think he was a former police officer he's been doing some great work on the ground in tenerife he interviewed a few people got some sources blah 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 he's actually made a lot of headway and be able to clear some things up he actually got an interview um with one of those guys and was able to kind of get more details as to what actually happened and i think you will be astounded and surprised by what exactly went on and how it actually ended up being the way it a convicted drug dealer who drove missing raver jay slater to a remote tenerife airbnb um just before he vanished last month is the mystery johnny vegas the mail can reveal ayub kwasim 531 was tracked down last week and said apprentice bricklayer jay okay cool first of all first error this guy isn't Johnny Vegas. So Ay Ayub Kwasim, Ayub Kwasim is a Somali guy who everyone's took in a picture. That's not him because allegedly there was two people. There was the Ayub Kwasim dude who took um, Jay Slater back to the Airbnb and there was a Johnny Vegas guy. The Johnny Vegas guy was a second dude, allegedly the black guy who people have been unable to identify. That's the one they need to get an eye on. Um, big up Gamebridge Football in the chat. Oh yeah, cool, cool. I'll put the dark mode in, in when I do random show then. Thank you for that. I'll just, I'll leave it like this for now, but when I do random show, I'll put dark mode because there's another, there's another mode too where you can have it more shadowy. So it kind of raises. It's not just black blocks, but I'll put the blocks when I do the random show. Big up Gamebridge Football. I appreciate you, brother. Um, but now the TV sleuth, Mark Williams Thomas has told the Mail Online that he has also interviewed Kwasim and coaxed out more details for him to flesh out of the mystery, which include him confirmed the nickname Johnny Vegas is his. It's not, by the way. That guy is not Johnny Vegas, please. It's a smart move, but he's not Johnny Vegas. Allegedly, it's what I know of. Jay has not been seen since June 17th. He was driven away by Kwasim and another man who is Johnny Vegas and who had been deemed irrelevant by Spanish police investigating and which left Jay's family baffled. We scroll down. There's Jay. There's the Kwasim dude who allegedly was one of the people that drove him back. Um, and obviously the rapper Potter Paper there too. We continue. And that's a, that's the in, from independent fucking journalist guy. Let's scroll down. Uh, so let's see here. An extensive search of the mountainside near Masca in the park in the Parque Rural Teno, close to where the mobile phone was last pinged using drones, dogs, and helicopters has failed. A major breakthrough came last week when the Mail Online found Kwasima his flat in East London after a comprehensive investigation, and now he has spoken again in depth about unveiled new details. Oh shit, he's from East. Bloody hell. Former Met Police Officer Mr. William Thomas, who's exposed Jimmy Savile, told Mail in the last 24 hours of spoken in detail with Kwasim who's better known as Johnny Vegas. He told me he was on Ve he was on a Veronica strip in Playa de Americas and said that Jay wanted to carry on partying and that he hadn't anywhere to stay. So he invited him back to his rental. Hmm. I'm already suspicious of this. Why would a young man go back to two older dudes' house because they want to party? There's no girls there, no drugs. Like, why else, why else would they be there? It doesn't make no sense. So that's already a red flag for me. In the car, they played music all the way. They stopped to get once a can of fizzy drink, allegedly. You're going back to an afters and you're getting fizzy drinks. Hmm. And there was three of them in a the car, Jay in the back and Kasim's friend in the front. Once at the property, his friend opened the door and went to the left and went straight to sleep. So you're playing music all the way to the from the nightclub to the venue to the home. And then when you get home, you both go to sleep straight away. Come on, man. 
Jay walked in and Kasim walked in behind him, went upstairs and got him a red blanket. I don't know about this story, mate. I don't know about this story. <laughs> Mr. Williams told, um, or was added that Kasim said, yo, bro, the sofa's for you there. And he gave him a towel if he needed a shower. Jay also asked for a cigarette and Kasim gave him a camel cigarette and left it on the side. So these two older dudes pick up a dude in the club they don't know invite him back to their home because he doesn't have his place to sleep give him a towel and a blanket with and there's no one come on man this seems weird jay also asked for a cigarette jay then asked for a charger and then went into kwasim's friend room while he was sleeping and got the charger mr williams thomas said that kwasim told him he then went to sleep and woke up to the sound of a door buzzer Kwasim opened the door and spoke to a woman and a man and they told him to move his car, which he did and he said he could say he could see Jay was chatting to a woman. He said that after the move in the car, he came back and saw Jay had his trainers on and he told Kwasim that the woman he said would get a bus every 10 minutes. Kwasim said, chill mate, I'll drop you off later when I wake up. But he said, Jay said, nah, I need some scran. I'm hungry. Jay said that he'd been told by the woman the bus to Los Cristianos was every 10 minutes and Kwasim said there was no bus and added, do you like, do what you like before going to sleep. Um, scroll down. Miss Williams Thomas added, Kwasim says the next thing he remembers is getting a call from one of Jay's friends to say he is lying in a ditch somewhere and that he's been bitten by a cactus. Kwasim was told was not was would not tell Mr. Williams the identity of the second man who was with him and refused to discuss the alleged theft of a Rolex, which might have contributed to Jay's disappearance. <laughs> Come on, man. Come on, man. A 19 year old boy going back to the house of two 30 year olds just to go and sleep. Come on. Most likely he went back to their houses to go pick up some more drugs or there was a promise of an after party but you're not just going there to sleep no it's not the case you're not going and leaving your friends and any possible baddies you might have spoken to in a club who are now standing outside you're looking for some last minute landmine to jump on and shit there's no way you'll go back to those people's houses unless there's a promise of drugs girls coming over for later or a party that's it so i don't believe this idea that he wanted to go all the what he went to drive 25 or 40 minutes away from the club to go and sleep to someone else's house when his accommodation was closer to the club how's that make any sense come on last week a tv detective who's probed a string of missing persons cases also said that jay from oswald thistle lancashire had been anxious and scared when he left the property Kwasim, who's spoken to spanish police was jailed in 2015 for nine years for being a ringleader of a london-based dealing crack and heroin in cardiff this shouldn't really matter but it should it doesn't it because nine years in prison is a long time so that guy that he went back to the home of is a convicted dealer it shouldn't matter but it's a big detail it's a big detail there's no way he went back to his house just to sleep and hang out come on bro she he is also closely connected to a legal cannabis cafe in Tenerife owned by childhood pal Pe Potter Paper. Yep, and I'm, I'm sure some of you guys have seen Potter Paper's um, cafe in Tenerife. It was recently in the news because um, they had like some gang fight where somebody broke into his cannabis shop and ended up rubbing everything and recording it all on camera, which is odd as well. Recorded themselves rubbing the whole place, taking all the money, taking all the weed and shit, um, and uploading it onto social media, of course. So that's why everyone kind of realized, oh shit, Pot of Paper's got a, a weed shop in um in in Tenerife. If you obviously if you're a fan of this, you would have known, but that's how it became like news. So you know, these are people who are involved in the quote unquote criminal underground. You know, involved in the drugs trade. The island is a party island. There's no other reason why that kid would go back to their house others aside from drugs and maybe the promise of chicks and a party. Let's not lie about this whole sleeping thing. But I get why Kwasim said it, because he doesn't want to get you know involved and he doesn't want to be blamed. Initially, it was thought that Johnny Vegas was a nickname of the second man who was at the Airbnb, but this has been ruled out by Mr. Williams Thomas in a new interview. I don't know if that's true. I don't know what... Maybe that Kwasim guy gave this journalist information and details that would make him believe he's Johnny Vegas. But from what I understand, nobody called that Somali guy Johnny Vegas. Johnny Vegas was the other guy. But, you know, the other guy, we don't know who he is. But shouldn't the, shouldn't the Spanish police know who he is? If the Spanish police know who he is, can't they just pass that information on? Because they already interviewed him. 
However, Kwasim's story is still far from clear as Jay's apartment was just 10 minutes away from Papagayo nightclub where the party was being held. Exactly. Why would he travel 45 minutes to another apartment when his own apartment is closer? On Saturday, Jay's uncle, Glenn Duncan, searched the area for several hours of his dad, Warren, 58, and his brother, Zach, 24. It's not looking likely that he's going to get found alive. Every day that passes, it makes it more and more unlikely that he's going to get found alive. Very, very, very unlikely. But it is unfortunate that one instance where you're just trying to score some more drugs, you're just trying to continue the party, could lead to your demise. It is unfortunate. Because imagine if all the stories, imagine if all the rumors are not true. Imagine if he didn't steal a watch. Imagine if he's not a drug mule. Imagine just a kid who's having a good time like everyone else has every other year when they go to fucking um, Tenerife. But he just happened to be unlucky and bump into the wrong people. Because there's probably loads of dealers out there who aren't involved in crazy shit, who just deal just to kind of make some money and it's no big of a deal. And then they smash, you know, a couple of 21 or 19 year olds here and there on the side, but that's all they do. He would have been fine. But for whatever reason, he bumped into some guys who, you know, walk the, talk to talk and walk the walk and it's probably led to his demise or more than likely he went wandering and he's just going to be found somewhere lying on the side of a mountain because he tried to get shade and you know he got exposed and blah 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 dehydrated ran out of gas whatever what are the two scenarios but it's for, it's becoming more and more unlikely they're going to find him alive unfortunately um but on, obviously you keep you know positive hope it does change and hope he is found safe and sound somewhere along the line there's also been an interview here with the uncle who's taking part in a new search as well. So big up the uncle um, who's completely pissed off that he went over to Tenerife and, fig and found out or saw that there's hardly, you know, a lot of presence when it comes to the disappearance of Jay Slater, which makes sense as well. It's a small island, part island. They don't want to scare the people who are going there. But, you know, he was very angry, courtesy of the son here. Jay Slater's furious uncle wants to burst into the police station and make Tenerife police follow every single lead glenn duncan told the son that he doesn't believe police are taking the search seriously and labeled it a massive letdown and again you can understand why because you know i guess yeah so i guess that's jay slater's according to the picture there i'm thinking that's jay slater's brother that's his brother zach that's the uncle what was it the uncle warren and the dad no or the uncle and then the dad there on the right hand side damn it bro scrolling down here in the article you got a little breakdown of the hunt for him and where he was found and where he went. Yeah, that's a long time, isn't it? He stays at Airbnb with two pals on the 16th and he hasn't been seen since then. That's a long time, bro. To be outdoors on your own with no, you know, no outdoors experience and stuff and how to survive, like no survival experience, sorry. <sighs> For a teenager, I'm not too sure about that one. His comments come as the family's desperate search for the Brit teen approached the fourth week. Police called off the search last Sunday after the mammoth hunt leaving the Jays family heartbroken and devastated. Um, I don't know if they're following up every single lead, says Glenn. I feel like marching down there myself and bursting to the police station. What are they actually doing now? The police, I mean, they're not searching with a helicopter, are they? To be fair, a small island police force probably has limited resources. Um, and most likely they just don't want to get involved because they don't want to be the ones to discover his body and shit. They also don't want to bring too much negative attention um, to um, this whole disappearance because they're afraid that it's going to scare away tourists and shit. So I get why they're taking the fourth of the pedal and by in general, um, island police, island people, island life is very slow. So to expect the same level of intensity and searching that you would get in England is really dumb personally it's really really dumb really naive if anything the money they raise on gofundme should allow them to hire some private investigators who can do that intense search and maybe if they get the police british police involved they may also help but you can't expect their you know this tenerife police or whatever people over there to be as bothered as they are because it's not their child and also it's tourism shit do you know what i mean they're probably going to blame it all on that and I'd imagine a, a, there's probably people out there that probably blame the kid for getting lost in the first place or being involved with those dodgy people. Um, are they doing door-to-door -door inquiries or sitting there looking at CCTV images? Cops use sniffer dogs, drones, and helicopters of volunteers of mountain rescue experts, but to no avail. Jay's devastated uncle vowed, we're still holding on to hope. We have to because we don't know. I, it's just torture every day. 
I got to the point where the sadness has gone and it's just anger. <sighs> yeah, man, they got to be furious, but you know, there's just literally nothing they can do in it. Nothing they can do. Jay's friend Lucy Lou, Lucy Law, sorry, claims she called her. She called him shortly after 9 a.m. on June 17 to tell her that he was lost in the middle of nowhere, desperate for a drink, and had one percent battery. Glenn said that if he had lost or hunt on a trail, he would have been found by now. Yeah, exactly. That's the thing I'm saying as well. Because if you're a foreigner, you're probably going to go on the obvious paths. They would have found him by now. So the fact that they haven't found him by now is very eerie, unfortunately. I've been thinking uh, third party involvement from the start. Glenn also said that he was baffled by the police decision to roll out the two men who Jay spent the night out with at 40, 40 pound a night Airbnb. Why would these two lads hire a villa up there? They're down on the strip, you know. What's it like down there? There's millions of apartments and hotels down in Los Cristianos and Americas. The reason why they hide it away from the strip is to hide it away from prying eyes. That's the obvious thing. I remember somebody in the stream chat told me before that most likely the woman that was hired, the woman that was Airbnb being out her place was most likely involved. Because I said, oh, why didn't that woman give that kid a lift home? But most likely she's involved in the illicit drug trade you'd imagine most likely they use that house as like a stock up place as like a you know warehouse as a place to whatever so that's probably why the house is so far away to keep it away from prying eyes um and obviously to stash their stuff away from the ship and shit and bloody blah 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 yeah exactly stash house pick up chris mike stash house so that's the reason probably why they're not on the strip it makes sense there's some of the police there, the Garda, Guardia Seville. You see they're searching. They Then apparently when one has been found, came out and he said he arrived alive and left alive. The fact that he has come out and said that all his mates have left him and he had nowhere to go. He was 10 minutes from his apartment, Los Cristianos. He's not stupid. If he didn't have a room key, he could have gone to... Yeah, exactly. That's not... So they're, they're trying to say that he went to those guys' apartment because he lost his room key. Spanish cops have spoken to both men already and cleared them to return to the UK. Dubby, they've been relevant to the investigation, but there has been calls for the police to speak to him again amid the ongoing mystery. Um, yeah, it's just not looking good for the kid, in it? Every day that goes by, we've all watched First 48. We know Wagwan. It's not looking good for him, but you never know, innit? You never know. Stranger things have happened. Miracles can happen, so he could get found. He could be found. And it all could turn around in the future. We just have to hope and pray. We just have to hope and pray.